morning to everyone. And we want to thank you all for joining us here this morning to talk about our care bill, particularly to my colleagues, Representative Antonio and Representative Garland, and a special thanks to them. Also, from the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center, we have Ms. Jovic. And from the Ohio Alliance to End Sexual uh, Violence, we have uh, Director Hannah, and we also have Ms. Jamie Miracle. So we will hear from all of the ladies this morning to talk about our CARE Act. I think this is an appropriate moment to quote the Dalai Lama. And he said, compassion is not religious business. It is not human business. It is not a luxury. It is essential for our own peace and mental stability. It is essential for human survival. And I think that quote sums up what our act uh, seeks to do. The Compassionate Assistance for Rape Emergencies Act, Senate Bill 283, gives the choice of, of treatment to the survivor. It is absolutely imperative that victims of sexual assault are provided with the full array of treatment information and options when they seek medical assistance. This legislation will make sure that they receive the level of care that they deserve. These measures will guarantee equal access to care for victims across this state, regardless of the beliefs of the institution they may seek the assistance from. It should not come down to the luck of the draw. Victims or survivors, as we should call them, should be able to decide what treatment they receive and not hospitals. As you know, we do have a companion piece in the house, which both of my colleagues will talk about. And now I'm going to turn this over to the hands of my esteemed colleague, Representative Antonio. Good morning. It is still morning, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> OK. Well, thank you all for being here today. And I would like to acknowledge, um, with gratitude, the leadership of Senator Nina Turner, as well as my joint sponsor in the House, Nancy Garland, as well as our other co-sponsors who have signed on to the bill, which um, was dropped this morning. We don't have a number yet, but we will shortly. We're all here today, as uh, Senator Turner said, to really talk about the CARE Act, the Compassionate Assistance for Rape Emergencies Act. That's why we're here today. But why is this an issue uh, that Ohioans should be concerned about? Well, let's consider a few statistics. According to RAIN, the Rape Abuse Incest National Network, one out of every six American women has been the victim of an attempted or completed rape in her lifetime. One out of every six women. Nine out of every 10 rape victims in the United States were female. According to a report by the Ohio Office of Criminal Justice Services on our own State of Ohio Department of Public Safety's website, there were 8,089 sexual assaults reported in Ohio in 2010. This includes various types of sexual assault. These numbers are sobering. We live in a state that has seen unprecedented challenges to women's access to reproductive health care recently through Ohio policies. It's imperative that we ensure that Ohio women, especially those who are the victims of sexual assault, get the medical treatment they need and deserve following a sexual assault. Make no mistake, this is not a Democratic or a Republican issue, nor is this an issue of ideology. This is an issue of fairness, compassion, and the right of survivors to access every resource possible to thrive in the future, to recover, and to make the best decisions that they can for themselves and for their families. At that point when they so need it, at that point of emergency treatment, this is something that should resonate with all Ohioans. The CARE Act would require that all hospital emergency rooms provide sexual assault survivors with information and treatment that can prevent pregnancy and sexually transmitted infections if the survivor wishes to take them. In a survey of hospital emergency rooms, it was shown almost 20% of Ohio hospitals that responded to the survey could not guarantee as a treatment option access to emergency contraception information. All women who are sexual assault survivors should have the knowledge of an access to emergency contraception and medication 
to prevent sexually transmitted diseases following a sexual assault if they so choose. We cannot have medical facilities withholding treatment information, treatment information from survivors and possibly victimizing them again through circumstance with additional dire um, consequences. I'll say that again. We cannot have medical facilities withhold treatment information from survivors and possibly victimize them again through circumstance with additional dire consequences. This bill would simply require the medical facilities to tell sexual assault survivors that the medications are available. The bill would place the responsibility on the hospital to have policies in place to ensure access for survivors and a protocol for providing treatment to their survivors in an unbiased and timely manner. We should ask no less of our medical treatment facilities. And now I would like to turn this over to you, Jackie Jovic, social change specialist for, oh, I'm sorry, Representative Nancy Garland. I got ahead of you. <laughs> Thank you, and I would like to thank my colleagues for leading the way on this important piece of legislation. And I think that Representative Antonio, with the figures that she gave us, which I always find amazing, considering one in every six women in Ohio actually have been sexually assaulted. But I bring to this, it really, this is, this is personal for me, because um, two women in my life, very close women, have been sexually assaulted. So I certainly wanted to know that they had, you know, this this type of, of information and care available to them. And I think comprehensive and compassionate care helps women in crisis more from uh, the victim to the survivor. Um, the CARE Act is a common sense approach. It will help ensure that sexual assault victims are given accurate, unbiased information in a timely manner when they visit the hospital, allowing them to make the informed choice about their lives and, and about their bodies. And I think that it's, it is only right, again, that we provide this ability to people that who have been uh, sexually assaulted. Um, I, I just can't think of anything that is, that is more caring than, than this legislation. Um, and I would like to um, uh, introduce um, Ms. Jackie Jovic, who is the um, social change specialist at the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Turner and Representatives Garland and Antonio, for taking on this CARE Act. The Cleveland Rape Crisis Center certainly commends you for your dedication, your compassion, and your caring in supporting survivors and for protecting their rights. Now, to all of us standing here and to most people, this is just common sense. It's common sense that a survivor who has just been stripped of all rights to her body through a horrible act of violence should not then again be victimized by being denied rights to her body through access to emergency contraception or other medication. Now that just makes sense. It's common sense, but as Senator Turner and I were talking earlier, common sense isn't so common. Uh, an illustration of that, a study just released, the National Intimate Partner Survey, shows that more women in the United States are raped than smoke, okay? 18.3% of women over the age of 18 in the United States in this study will be victims of sexual assault in their lifetime. 17.4% of those women will smoke in their lifetime. Now let's think about the money, resources, and time that we spent supporting smokers, right? There are millions of dollars spent on smoking awareness campaigns, on um, smoking cessation, cessation programs, aids to stop smoking, there are laws, there are taxes on cigarettes. Now compare all of that money and all of that awareness to what we do to support survivors. There is a lot of work to be done. So I certainly thank you for all of the work that you are doing. Uh, one, I know uh, a sticking point to this. A lot of people say, well, this will violate the physician's individual rights. My colleague often tells a story about 
um, a survivor. She met her at the emergency room. The survivor barely escaped her attacker. She left, went to the emergency room, no socks and shoes. She was only able to escape because the uh, attacker was in the restroom. So she gets out, she goes, gets to the emergency room. Six hours into her emergency room visit, she wants emergency contraception. And the physician on duty says no, because it was his religious belief that he shouldn't write the prescription. So fortunately, this survivor had advocates they asked a few questions, found out that this doctor was going to be off duty in 20 minutes. They waited for the next doctor to come on duty. He wrote the prescription, no problem. So in this instance, that's how the CARE Act should work. The hospital should have procedures in place that a survivor would have the right to emergency contraception. The doctor's rights are not violated, but the survivor is protected. That's what's so important. And again, we thank the representatives and the senator for making sure that this happens.